So now that we've seen how to create and use objects in Java, we're going to move on to talk about some, some user input and output options that Java can do. Uh, talk more about how the front end works um, when it comes to Java applications. Um, so what I'd like to do in this video is show you a little menu that I've made to interact with computer objects that we created in the previous video, and then show you the code for this menu system, show you how to get input from the user and how to do some user valid, uh, input validation um, using Java concepts. So here, what you see right now is a, is a menu uh, that allows us to interact with computer objects. You can see that the first option listed allows us to create a computer. The second option displays the list of computers that are available. The third option allows us to change the processor. The fourth option allows us to add memory. And the fifth option allows us to exit. And so if I choose an option, such as the first one, I type in 1 and hit return. And it asks, starts prompting me for the different things that it needs in order to create one of these computer objects, starting with the memory, going on to the processor speed, the size, and then finally a brand. And once we're finished, it puts us back on the main menu. And now that I've gone and created that computer object, you can see the second option here should display that computer object that I just created in the previous part. I can use the other options as well to change the processor or add memory. But hopefully you see that there's kind of a, a relationship between what the menu is offering and what our computer object offers. Each of these menu options is really just a, a front end on the methods, the behaviors that we wrote for our computer object. So that is really the best way to um, think about these menu systems, is providing a, a front end, a user interface to the methods, to the behaviors of our Java objects. Um, one thing that I would like to also point out about this menu system is that it does do some user validation. So if I try to pick an option that's not on the list, for example, like number six, it tells me it's an invalid selection, asks me to try again. Okay. So I can keep doing this until I do pick an option that works. Um, if I select number five, the program will actually exit. So the program is now finished. What I'd like to do next is actually go through this code with you and talk about it in terms of design. What does this actually need in order to uh, function? And what are some good validation techniques for user input when it comes to Java? So let's, let's move this down and take a look at the code uh, for this menu system. The first thing that we see up at the top is a couple of new imports that we haven't seen before. One for something called an array list and one for something called a scanner. An array list is what we're going to use to hold our computer objects as we create them. A scanner is what we're going to use to uh, get the user input, so actually get the values that the user is typing into the console. And you can see right away, I've got two instance variables here, an array list of computers and a scanner object that I'm going to use throughout this menu. Now this array list looks a little bit different. There's something new in here that we haven't quite seen before, these angle brackets. Since this array list is a Java object, in order for us to tell us the kind of thing that it, that it contains, I need to use these angle brackets. So you can see that I'm actually creating an array list that's going to hold computer objects. Now, why is it called an array list? Well, this is actually a special kind of object that works kind of like an array and kind of like a list. It's sort of a hybrid of the two data structures. We've seen both of them before in C. Um, you can, of course, have them in Java as well. An array list sort of combines the two, and it behaves a little bit differently. I'll show you actually how to use this array list as we go through the code. So now you can see our very simple main method creates an instance of this computer menu object, and it just asks the user, it just prints out the start menu, asks the user for an option, and then processes whatever input the user gives us over and over and over again until they choose option number five, which if you remember from our menu, option number five is the option that tells us to exit the program. There's actually a special name for this structure in Java and programming, actually. This is called a sentinel structure. It sits and accepts input from the user until we get a value that we're looking for, in this case, the exit value of five, under which case the sentinel stops. The sentinel exits, and the program moves on to its next task. The next thing that we have in our computer menu code is the constructor. Recall from our previous conversations that the constructor's whole purpose 
is to make sure that the instance variables have values. So the first thing that it's going to do is initialize the scanner. And the way that it does that is it creates a new scanner object. The constructor for a scanner takes in what's called a print stream. In this case, we want to use um, system.in, which means the input to the console as our stream. And this will allow us to then ask the user for feedback, ask the user for input. On the next line here, you see we initialize our other instance variable, which is that array list that we saw up here at the top. So in order to do this, we just create a new array list. This will create an empty array list that we can then start storing computer objects into as we create them. Now we actually hop into the menu piece of the code. So you see this method called start menu that displays all of the different menu options and asks the user to select an option. We then use our scanner. So the scanner has many different methods available. In this case, since all of our options are integers, I use the next int method on our scanner object to ask the to ask the user to type in an integer value. If the user does give us something that's not an integer value, this will actually fail. This will actually cause an error. Um, it's not pretty. It's actually something that should be fixed in the code and something that I would encourage you to um, think about. See if you can come up with a with a way to get around this nasty error condition. But for our purposes, we're going to assume that the user will type in an integer. And next we see another sentinel checking to make sure that the option that the user was selected is in the range of available options for our menu. If it isn't, you see another call to nextint asking them to give us another option. So this is the menu that's going to re be repeated over and over and over again until the user picks option number five. The next method is really the heart of this entire menu system. Once I have the input from the user, and I validated that input, I know that it's a, a proper selection, I'm going to pass it to this process input method, and that will actually perform the action that the user selected. This is good design. We want to separate these two behaviors out so that the actual processing of the menu selection is separated from the displaying of the menu and the um, verification of user input. So in my process input, you see that I've got four different cases, one for each of the menu options that require us to do some work. The first menu option asks us to create a computer, so I just call a method called create computer. We'll see this a little bit later on in the code. The second option just displays the available computer, so we see another method call. The third option allows uh, wants us to swap out the processor, so it's a little bit more involved. You see that I call display computers and then ask them to select one using this select computer method. I have another sentinel that makes sure that they choose the appropriate, uh, I'm sorry, that they um, enter a processor speed that is appropriate. And then I call the set processor method on the computer that they selected, with C being the result of this select computer method that we're gonna see in just a minute. The option um, for adding memory to a computer is very similar. You see I display the computers, ask them to select one, and then ask them for memory using another sentinel before calling the add memory method. So these two methods work very much the same way. In order to display the computers, what we need to do is iterate over that array list object and print out every computer that it contains. So you can see here a very simple for loop for performing that task. Computers is the name of my array list. If I want to get how many elements there are, I use the size method. So you see here I'm using the size method in my for loop. And then in order to retrieve um, objects from the array list, I use the get method, where i is an index. This is very similar to if I had an array using square brackets, computers i. It's a very similar approach. The only difference is, instead of using square brackets, I'm calling a method to get the object out of the array list instead of uh, using the square brackets directly, like we've been doing. Select computer uses much uh, a similar technique to get computers out of this array list. I first display all of the computers and ask them to select one, and then I take their selection and I plug it in as an index to the get method in order to retrieve the computer that the user selected. 
The reason that I subtract 1 from the selection is because the array list does start from 0, as all of the arrays that we've seen start from 0. But the menu itself actually starts with option number 1. So there is a discrepancy between the two. And then finally, the last method that we see down here is for creating a computer, which you see is really just more data validation, more sentinels. So for every option that a computer needs, for every value that a computer needs in the constructor, I ask them to enter a value. The memory is first, followed by the processor speed, followed by the size, and then finally the brand. And you can see the very last line creates a new computer object by calling the constructor, and it adds that to our array list of computers so that I can then access that computer using the other menu options. I know this is kind of a large code base, uh, but it is a pretty good example of using an array list and a scanner to uh, process user inputs to provide a nice menu interface to our Java objects. One of the exercises, I'm going to ask you to create a similar menu system for the robot objects that you've been working on.